Hi everyone and welcome back to another Bork No Game video. Today's video is AK2, hard farming for the 2x stuff. Happy 420. Let's go ahead and jump right into this. Go into quest, go into main quest, jump into hard mode. And if there's anything that I have learned, we're going to go ahead and get some Akino shards, is that hard mode farming is, or character shard farming is very RNG. But most of all, a lot of the characters in clan battle are very viable. The only difference between some characters quote unquote being better than others is the fact that they don't have enough stars to stay alive during the boss phase. So for example, if you have an Eriko that's 4 or 5 star, then she's going to be absolutely worth it to pretty much run. And it's surprising to me that I just find this out because what this tells me is that a lot of the things that other clans do is they find that third team because there's those two teams that you can run Makoto and Kairi and they will usually grant you a large amount of DPS and from what I've seen from the past clan battle is the Suzume comp was very efficient the Suzume comp being like an archer comp and what did that really show me? What the Suzume comp is not really the key part, it's the archers. So having at five star, Suzuna at five star, or even having, you know, Sherisa at five star if you have that capability. They seem to be just as good as Kaori and Makoto combined under the correct circumstances. Of course, you still need like Makoto and it's interesting to see that the archers are able to perform that way. Now, Aoi, I'm not sure just because she doesn't have that much DPS potential. I also have been seeing Kokoro 5 star. That is insanely situational. Kokoro 5 star, I personally don't recommend unless you know for a fact that your Kokoro is going to be a face tank. You know, you're going to pretty much switch her in, which requires manual play in some case. Unless you are into manual play, I don't recommend 5 star in Kokoro. And if you 9-3 her or you're at rank 9, feel free to just equip her weapon in order to get the most benefits and don't equip the armor. And unless you're trying to keep her alive as long as possible, but feel that Kokoro shines with higher stars in PvP. In clan battle, it's more of a personal decision where it's like, okay, Kokoro's not really here to buff. Because Kokoro actually adds quite a bit of damage whenever you run her on a specific team. From what I've seen, her buffs seem to be the strongest within the actual game. You know, the attack buffs, the speed buffs, sort of unparalleled in some ways, which is kind of funny to say because I don't think Monica can provide as many buffs as Kokoro. Not to mention Kokoro's damage is nice and she can face tank. She can do so many things that just a lot of units wish they could do. And I am going to be advising to refresh shards. My biggest advice when you're farming hard, you know, during this time frame is getting more Eriko shards and really farming up on the archers. Archers seem to be the gateway to creating that third team. Of course, this is also going to be the time frame where we can actually run the magic teams because Ilya is now here. I'm not sure if I'm going to be pulling on the Ilya banner just yet, just because I know in order for her to be viable in PvP, she needs to be five star. In order for her to properly tank in clan battle, she needs to be five star. But if you don't need Kauri to tank, or not Kauri, but Ilya to tank, then technically you can keep her at three star and you can have someone else in front of her so you can go down that route we'll talk more about like the Ilya banner but just because she is going to be in the permanent pool i don't think it's highly advised to really pull for her as a free to play just because summer is around the corner and then after summer things get really like a lot of like meta units or a lot of like better units are going to be appearing a lot of waifus like Christina is going to be appearing, New Year's Yui is going to be appearing. Year 2 is the year where more of the banners become relevant and you can pull more often. Year 1 is sort of like that grace period, that slow period where you sort of save up your gems and go from there. We can do some of Shinobu's. I recommend clearing everything out if possible. But if you have any sort of like inclination to max prioritize, it would definitely be Mimi, Archers, Eriko, and then, you know, three star Shinobu. Most of the characters that are not DPS, right? Shinobu is technically a defense breaker support and remain at three star. Technically, Kokoro can remain at three star. Pecorine can remain at three star. But if you see them as a DPS unit, someone who's going to be regularly out on the field taking some heat, then, you know, for example, Kino should be at 5 star, Rei should be at 5 star, Mimi should be at 5 star, Ninon should be at 5 star, but that's a pure PvP unit. 
and then you know as you know archers should be five stars let's go ahead and do our free pulls for the day i know folks have been asking you know bork are you gonna do free pulls yes hopefully we can get misato and when it comes to this i do not recommend saving your pulls i have a high inclination to believe that they're going to do something where in the last couple of hours they extend it enough so that you can't use your free pulls on the Ilya banner and you pretty much you know you, you lose your free pulls which is absolutely insanity so make sure don't save it not to mention you lose 10 days of progress you lose out on hard shard farming those summons are not worth it all right i can tell you right now those summons are not worth it to save for the Ilya banner because the game will definitely screw you over in some way and what if you don't like get Ilya from all those summons it's, it's probably like the worst feeling all right no misato in this one but we have a couple of days left and i'm looking forward to it all right let's go ahead and jump into some pvp as we always do and when it comes to like farming stuff in hard nodes i don't really have a secure opinion on it i feel that if you are competitive in clan battle or competitive in arena you're competitive in the game in general or you want to stay meta relevant and whatnot then feel free to expend more gems to do more refreshes and everything right but when it comes to like a casual player or someone who just sort of want to keep up with some things, then I would just focus on your waifus and just note, like I said earlier, five stars make a huge difference in actual gameplay. Five star Hyori is a significant difference from four star Hyori. It was kind of insane to see what that sort of looked like because I honestly thought the differences weren't going to be that key. It was the difference between 750k damage to like 932, upwards to 950, 960. If I got the timing right, maybe I could have done like one mil possibly. It's just surprising like stars can make that much of a difference and with archer teams it even makes a bigger difference because it allows you to not have to use a makoto carry team and with a higher starred archer team you can reach those numbers of like 800k what you would wish to hit with a normal weaker team also with the addition of crab coming to this clan battle what i think is going to be fairly interesting is that mage comps are going to be a thing Ilya is going to be a thing in pvp and Ilya is going to definitely mess with few things up she has to be five star like we've covered previously when Ilya becomes like the thing that she is she's going to be relevant for maybe two or three months and she'll get some counters so don't worry if you can't pull during like the Ilya season and you're hardcore in pvp or hardcore during clan battle she will be sort of replaced in some ways by other characters and summer is just around the corner so unless you're planning on wailing out for Ilya you can do maybe like one pull or a couple of pulls just to get a copy of her. I feel like Kyoka would technically have been the safer sense because Ilya requires just a lot more investment in order to get more return. But Ilya is going to be a welcome addition to everything and with the magic comps being a thing, level 98 and more gear drops is going to be occurring. Level 98 was the app that folks were at when the crab boss pretty much appeared. I believe his name was Cancer. I'm going to digress the most important thing with this hard mode farming. I didn't know because I never 5 starred Yuri. I never 5 starred most of my characters and once I saw like the damage differences between the different teams, I was like, oh, this is how people are scoring so high in CB. They're not exactly doing something different. It's the fact that their stars are enabling them to tank bosses. That's the key part that I want to say. It's being able to tank the boss hits and generating enough damage and staying alive because a lot of the times when you run makoto tank she doesn't work out well because she doesn't have enough stars right so if you have a five star makoto and she can tank the hits and then you have like someone on standby like yukri or something and they can pretty much provide heals that's going to be super helpful it's just weird to me that i didn't see it before i didn't see how powerful stars were for DPS specifically, because for DPS, it's not really about dealing more damage. I want to get that sort of out of your head. And we'll do like a stars video and everything, right? Point of stars is to have your units become tankier so they can take more hits. And that enables them to last longer during the fight and enables them to deal more damage, right? More of a survivability aspect and less of a damage aspect. That's what I sort of want to see in stars. That's why when some people are like, hey, you shouldn't star up Kokoro, it's because it's for a survival sense. It's not for the fact that she can TP boost more. It's not so that she can, you know, grant more buffs or anything. It's just that when you switch her in, if you want to do, you know, more Kokoro tank, then she will stay alive. That's the whole point of stars. 
and it's probably a recommendation to start up June so she can stay alive, you know, in PvP situations like this. Because a start up June will definitely outclass like a three star June. And I'm pretty sure you've seen where Kuka at five star is absolutely nutty. She is a night and day difference from her three star and four star form. Just note that when you get a character to five star, they get more defense capabilities, right? They get, or they get an extra EX skill, you know, add on. And we'll show what happens when, you know, there's like a little tick in stats for what you get during five star. So some folks are worried, you know, is five star the thing that makes them hit harder? No, it's really not like about the attack stat. It's purely about survivability. Probably gonna lose this fight. They have like a Ninon and a Saren comp. This is like just an anti comp where it comes to, you know, they're just gonna burst me down because they're so fast and they have UBs. But let's go ahead and look at Hyori and what was the things that she picked up on five star in case, you know, folks were curious. You can see her own physical attack is 1635. I don't believe it was that before. Let's go ahead and go to a different character like Yukari. You can see if she increases her physical attack and magic defense, right? Changes and physical attack is nice enough and you know more magic defense but most of the time when you go to five star it's all about that defense capability it's all about the fact that they get more hp and more survivability so that's why it's never really advised to make your supports you know higher stars like kokoro unless you want her to be in that situation anyways if you made it this far in today's video consider subscribing dropping a like leaving a comment follow me on twitch follow me on twitter we'll be at 17,500 subs we'll be doing a giveaway Thanks so much for watching. Have yourself a fantastic 420 and I will see you in the next one.